Hey everybody, welcome to No Bones About Wrestling. I'm your host, Asa, and I'm here with Kay Fabulous. Hey. And this is your Ring of Honor Death Before Dishonor preview show. Ring of Honor has a pay-per-view coming up very soon. Coming up tomorrow, in fact. Friday, July 21st in Trenton, New Jersey. Uh, not a, not many matches announced yet, but uh, we're going to guide you through it. Uh, there are five matches announced, and we're going to give you our thoughts on the five that have been announced. I'm sure they're going to announce more. I'll be shocked if they don't. Uh, generally, they have, you know... I'd say maybe what almost twice as many on a on a pay per view card. I mean, on their regular card, they have ten. Yeah. So twice as many on a regular card. So, uh, but we've got five announced. So that's all we can preview. So we're going to preview those five. And they're all title matches. And they're so all far. title matches. Yeah. yeah. And of course, our prediction championship is on the line. I am the current champion. In K- case K- anyone needed reminding. K is the current prediction champion she won the prediction championship at what card was that what show was that last you don't even know i don't know i don't know either there's so many goddamn shows this what was it wwe, WWE whatever Ooh. one with the with where the uh where the usos beat roman and uh and solo what was that called was it payback? Was that what no, that happened? No, no, no. Oh, I don't know. I could look through my notes to figure Whatever out. it was called. Money in the bank. Thank you, yes. Yeah, she won money in the bank. Alright, so let's get started here. Uh, Sorry, I don't have an Alexa for that. Stop it. So first, <laughs> that was our Alexa. I don't know what she heard. So first off... The Ring of Honor Pure Championship. Uh, we have the champion, Katsuyori Shibata, the old man. Uh, he's had the belt since March of this year. And he actually won it from the challenger, Daniel Garcia, of the Jericho Appreciation Society. Although may he may not be in the Jericho Appreciation Society now. I don't know. It's, it's, it's nebulous. Um... But so, Kay, who do you think, uh, who do you have winning this pure championship? And and if you're not cl- clear, the pure championship, uh, it has its own set of rules. They're called the pure rules. And there are no, uh, no rope breaks. There are no, excuse me, you get three rope breaks. And then there are no rope breaks mm-hmm. past that. What are the rest of the pure rules? Um, it is a 20 second count out as opposed to 10. Yeah. Cause 20 is 20 seconds in, uh, in Japan. So I think they're trying to get to that kind you of, you get a one warning closed fist. And after that, you're disqualified if you use a closed fist. Right. Um, and then there is a time limit. And if you reach that time limit, instead of going to a time limit draw, it goes to a panel of three judges who have been judging the, the match, the match the yeah. entire time. Yeah. yeah. Are those all the rules? I believe so. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while, yeah. Um, those are most of the rules, if not all of them, of a pure of a pure rules match. You know, the closed fists. I thought it was two rope breaks. Rope break, maybe. Something like that. Yeah. You, you only get X number. You get two rope breaks. Yeah. And then you can't break anymore. Yeah. You get X number of rope breaks. Um, and then you've got the... The judges. Mm-hmm. I think that's all of them. I think them. that's yeah. all of them, yeah. Um, and I think, well, is the other rule, you can lose the title on a disqualification, correct? Is that one of the rules? I don't know. Now I'm not sure. Now I'm not sure about it. So, who knows? We should probably look it up. But... Uh, while we look up the Ring of Honor Pure Rules, Kay, what is what are your thoughts on this match? Um. So, like, do you want me to tell you who I'm picking? Is that what do you mean by my thoughts? Well, yeah, duh. Why? Why, well, why else know. are we here? I thought you meant like, what do I think about the match? Well, both. Um, yes, both. So, 
I would like to see Shibata have a different opponent um, than Why? Daniel Garcia. I'm not a big Daniel Garcia fan. His dancing really bothers me, like, enough to where it makes me not like him. Which, I guess he's a heel, so maybe that's what it's supposed to do. Mm-hmm. But, um, it's just not, like, it's just stupid. Like, it's not... It doesn't do anything to me as a fan. It heel, does something to you as a woman, is what it, you're trying to say. It does something to me as a person. Like, it bothers me because of how stupid it is and how it takes time out of the match to do something stupid and distracting from the match itself. Um, so I have Shibata winning this, and I am also for Shibata. Um, I really want to see him versus, like, Zack Sabre Jr. is what I really want to see happen. Well, we're not going with that. We're going with what we have. So you're picking... You were asking my thoughts on the match, and I'm telling you that's one of my thoughts on the match. So you're picking Shibata... I'm picking Shibata, and I am for Shibata. I see. What about you? Well, here, I'm, I've am i gotten the... Uh, the pure rules. Pure rules here. Uh, each wrestler has three rope breaks oh, to sorry. stop submission holds and pinfalls. Mm-hmm. After they exhaust their rope breaks, submission and pin attempts on or under the ropes are legal. Uh, no closed fist punches are permitted. You get a warning, and then after that, the referee can disqualify you. Um, That's not a complete list of the rules. Okay. You know what I was just thinking while you're you're looking for more? This would be a really cool uh, setting on AEW Fight Forever. To have, like, a Ring of Honor's Pure Rules match, and then, like, maybe, like, an FTW Rules match. Like, to have... Like, I like how they give you the um, DQ on or off, and the, I think there's a rope break on or off, uh, mm. and I forget what the third thing is that they give you an option for. But I like that they give you some options, but uh, I would like it more. Count out. Count, count out. out. Thank yeah. you, count out. I, I would like it more if, they, if you could have these, like, special rules matches. Yeah, I agree. Maybe, maybe down the line that's something they can incorporate. I'm trying to find these goddamn rules. Well, we covered most. Okay, nope. Here we go. (laughs) Here we go. Each wrestler has three rope breaks. uh, There are no closed closed fist punches. No closed punches. No closed fist uh, fist punches. You try saying that. That's tough. (laughs) Uh, The first juice gets a warning. The second will cause the wrestler to be penalized a rope break. If he's already out of rope breaks, he'll be disqualified. Uh, also, a wrestler is subject to a 20 count on count outs. And yes, I just wanted to, to, while not a rule itself, it is worth noting that unlike other championships, the Ring of Honor Pure Championship could change hands on a disqualification oh, okay. or count out. Well, That's what I go. thought. I just wanted to verify Yeah, that. no, I'm glad you checked that. That's a big deal. So yeah, Kats- uh, Katsuyori Shibata... The old man has had the best. He's like 43 years don't old. That's why I call him the old man. man. You don't call Sting the old man because you're not disrespectful towards Sting. I think Sting. I always mention how he's old, yes. I, I just call Shibata the old man. That's not nice. Uh, it's a sign of respect. I'm not saying anything negative. You're, you're doing that in your own head. <laughs> uh, March 31st. Of this year, he won the Pure Championship from Garcia. Oh, that's Super Card of Honor. Thank you. And uh, and he has defended it uh, fairly regularly on uh, Honor Club. And Garcia, you know, keep he stays in the title picture, and stays in the title picture. And I think Garcia is getting the belt back. I think Garcia is going to be a two or or this may be a three time uh, pure championship. I forget how many times he's had it already, but I think Garcia is winning it back. I, I yeah. That makes me sad. Who am I going for? I'm going for Shibata. I believe I'm cheering for Shibata, but I I'm predicting Garcia. Interesting. And I, too, would rather see him against, like, yeah, I would rather see Shibata versus Zack Sabre Jr., yeah, but we're not booking a dream match. We're predicting this. Uh, 
I can do two things at once. No, we're not. We're not trying to confuse our listeners. We're 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 predicting this card. But you asked so, my thoughts on the match, and my thoughts on the match are that I would rather see the match versus a different opponent. Well, that opponent being Zack Saber Junior. Well, we're predicting this card. <laughs> okay. So Shibata okay. versus Garcia. Yeah. Um. And yeah, like I said, I'm rooting for Shibata, but predicting Garcia. Uh, any further thoughts on the match? You, it's no, going to be a good I'll, match. I will be sad to see Shibata go if yeah. he goes. I think that he's been an excellent pure champion. I think that his technical wrestling skills are... I know that people question when I use the word beautiful in the ring, but I think he is a beautiful wrestler. Like, I don't think I, anyone questions when you use that. I feel like I've had people question it. It's okay. Um, yeah, I just... I think that... Uh, yeah, his, he he really makes wrestling look like an art form, which it is, you know? And I think that it'll be sad to see him go if he if he loses this, this championship. So do you think, whether he wins or loses, just here's a side tangent, do you think Garcia's days in the Jericho Appreciation Society are numbered? We saw yeah. him, he yes. and Sammy Guevara lost in the finals of the blind eliminator tag tournament wednesday night and then they jericho was waiting for them atop the ramp and both men just walked right past jericho they did yes you think it's over i think it's over yeah it was kind of sweet though jericho was like waiting there to kind of like console them and tell them like we'll get him next time you know like he didn't he wasn't there to like reprimand them um so i felt bad for jericho which they don't often make you feel bad for Jericho on that show, um, but yeah, no, I think I think the JAS is disintegrating as we speak. Yeah, Jake Hager turned in his hat. His stupid, stupid purple hat. Garcia and Guevara pretty much walked out on it. So we still got Parker and uh, Menard and Menard, and that's hardly a faction. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Parker does have that precious poem that Jericho gave him that means so much to him, so maybe that, that gift alone will be enough to keep him in the ranks. Well, those guys might go with Jericho to Don Callis' family. Does Don Callis want them in his family? They need guys to lose matches there, too, you know? Yeah, that's true. So. <laughs> what about Anna J.S.? We're leaving her out. Oh, I forgot. It's in her um, name. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't seen her in a while. Yeah, she kind of, she comes and goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really. So it's, I, think it's, she's been I doing, kind of forget she's a member of it, honestly. I think she's been doing their house shows. No, well, she could use it. So hopefully yeah. she gets more practice and, and yeah. improves because mm-hmm. I've not been impressed with her, quite honestly. So yeah. I'd, I'd like to see her... <laughs> Or improve some. The AEW's women's roster needs mm-hmm. some improvement. So mm-hmm. any way they can get it. Uh, but yeah, so we we're split in the in the pure championship match. Uh, I think we're right. gonna be split on a few of these. All right. Next up, the Ring of Honor World Women's Championship match. Uh, we have the champion Athena. Defending against Owen Hart Foundation tournament winner Willow Nightingale. Uh, also, former New Japan Strong Women's Champion Willow Nightingale. And these, um, both these ladies have actually, I've, I've heard them expressing, well, I can't remember if it was both now, I'm sorry. I feel like it was, but I know I definitely, I read an interview with Athena expressing that she thought she should main event, uh, she thought they should main event this pay-per-view. Hmm. What do you think? You're putting me on the spot here. Um, no. No? No. Why not? Because the world's title is a bigger deal. The men's world title, you the mean? Men's world title, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Plus, we just saw Athena versus Willow. 
mm-hmm. on not a pay-per-view. So to then take a match we just saw on regular television and put it as the main event of your pay-per-view mm-hmm. seems like an unwise move. That's and my the, main and, reason. Not not really that the men's title is bigger, but which it is. But it is. But it is. It is. Um, but but that we've just seen this matchup. And and honestly, we did just see it, and the main the what's going to main event. We assume what's going to main event: Death Before Dishonor, Claudio versus Pack, is gonna be a hell of a lot better than Athena versus Willow was. Yes, yeah. Or is going to be now. If it was that match that was on Ring of Honor that was Athena versus Emi Sakura, I could get behind that being a main event. Because that is still one of the most mind-blowing women's matches I've ever seen. So it's possible for Athena to have a main event level match. Oh yeah, I'm not saying it's sure. not. Yeah, it is. Um, it is. But I just don't think... Not not these two. Not these two. And like, we, not only do we just see it on television, but we've also seen it on Honor Club before, on like a regular Honor Club episode. Well, I'm just saying, we saw it on television, and we saw that it is, frankly, not main event caliber. Yeah, yeah. Good match. Maybe they were saving some some of their juice for this pay-per-view, but... Yeah, good match, but not mm-hmm. main event caliber. Yeah, no. yeah. No. I would see Samoa Joe and, and Dalton Castle as main event before Willow and... Or, and the, or the tag match. Or the tag match. Or the pure championship or the pure match. Champion. Yes, yes, I mean... All of these. All to of be these frank, are candidates. To be frank, I think this will... Out of the five matches, this will be the worst of the five matches. Yeah. And, I expect and, and, all five to be good. Yes, yes. But if we're going to talk about what, what deserves to be the main event, I, this would be fifth out of five. You know, the only thing is, like, Athena is undefeated. She's not undefeated. In Ring of Honor, she's undefeated. Is she? I guess That's so. how she has her title. Well, yeah, but that uh, that doesn't mean she's undefeated. She hasn't lost by disqualification or anything. You know? Not that I know of. Well, we'll, we'll have to check on that. I don't that. even think she's gone to a time limit draw in those... Uh, I mean, we, we in full disclosure, we have stopped watching the regular Ring of Honor. We just got it back yesterday. Um, but we're, so we're, like... I think five episodes behind um, in Ring of Honor, uh, maybe a, a little more. Um, but as far as I know, she's never lost even like a proving ground match. Yeah, I've been I've been keeping up with the results. Mm-hmm. I've been keeping up with the matches, not so much the results, but the week to week matches, so just to see like the storylines where they're going. But um, of course, we're familiar with all these competitors. Correct. Yeah. Um. All right, so, well, you went first last time. I'll go first this time. Uh, Athena has had her women's world title since December 10th of 22. Uh, Good long reign. She just did the job to Willow in the Owen Hart tournament. I don't see her losing to Willow again. You know, I think the whole point of her putting over Willow in that tournament was so Willow could get her win there and so Athena can get her win here and keep her world women's title. Um, you know, it seems like they're going to use Willow more in AEW than Ring of Honor, so I don't see much point in giving Willow the Ring of Honor women's title and taking it from Athena. So I'm going to take Athena, and uh, I think we're going to have a good match um like i said it's it'll it'll be the the fifth best of these five we have announced probably probably but it it'll be it's it'll be a good match um but yeah i pick athena uh i'm i'm i pick athena to win and i'm also cheering for athena uh, i like what she's been doing in ring of honor she's been a dominant women's world champion fighting an array of opponents fighting regularly, uh, putting on very good matches for the most part. And, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So keep the title on her, keep it going, and keep the women's division in Ring of Honor. uh, Keep it going strong with a a strong woman at the head of it. And keep the belt on Athena is, is what I say and what I think that Tony Khan will do here. We are of one mind uh, as far as who we think will win the match and why. Um, 
So I'm not going to reiterate all the things that you just said, but uh, I agree with them completely. Um, however, I am for Willow Nightingale because I cannot root against her. Because um, she is just like pure bottled essence of joy. Mm-hmm. And I cannot cheer against that. I say. Now, if she was wrestling like Tony Storm or Thunder Rosa, I might find it in my heart to root against Willow Nightingale, but I don't even know if that if that's the case. Uh, she's so joyful. Why are you looking at me like I'm crazy? Have you seen her? She's like... She seems so authentically joyful. You know, like wrestling is like all she wants to be doing in the world... And it just makes her in her happy place, you know? And that's just a beautiful thing to see. And it's infectious. Her happiness is infectious. So I'm going to root for Willow, but I think Athena is going to win, which I am fine with. Um, She needs to smash more porcelain hussies, as she says. Uh, So I don't know if Willow's a porcelain hussy, though. It just means, like, fragile. Yeah, but I don't think Willow's... You don't think she's fragile? No, I don't think she's a porcelain hussy. Well, then no. maybe she's not going to smash her then. We'll see. Um, I think Athena's been a really phenomenal champion. Yeah. Um, she's been able to have really good matches with women that I think, had they another opponent, maybe would not have been able to put on the show that they put on, you mm-hmm. know? Um mm-hmm. I think that she elevates her opponents in a way that a lot of women aren't able to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's a good heel, too. She's a great heel, yeah. Very good heel. Very good at getting the crowd to cheer for her opponent, mm-hmm. whether they have done anything to deserve it themselves <laughs> yeah. or not. Yeah, no, that's true. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I can't say enough good about Athena. Uh, she could stand to... Uh, Get a little fitter, I think, you know? Oh, see, I thought you were going to go with promos. I feel like she could work on her promos some. Uh, that, too. That she too. needs to work on looking like she believes what she's saying. She could stand to get a little fitter and, uh, you know, just a little more. She she t- seems to get tired a little later in matches. And uh, mm, I haven't noticed that. I think, you know, that's something she could improve. And I don't think it's a, I don't think it's an act. Um. So I, I think she needs to kind of improve her cardio a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, that's something with which she struggled a little is her, her fitness. Her stamina. Yeah. Um, so that's something she needs to improve. Um, but that's that's about, you know, it's about the only negative I could say for Athena. She, uh, well, and like you said, improve her promos a bit. So sometimes they come off as... Uh, Scripted? Yeah, which, I mean, they are. But, yeah, mm-hmm. she needs to improve her delivery some. But uh, but in the ring, usually she she delivers. So there's not mm-hmm. a lot bad I can say about Athena. She's, yeah. you know, if she can improve upon those two aspects, she'll be golden. Uh, up next, we have the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship match. A... Whew four-way match this was a difficult one yeah this was the the hardest one to yeah, pick for me for me too uh we have the ring of honor tag team champions the lucha brothers ray phoenix and penta el sierra Medo. uh we have the best friends uh chuck taylor and trent beretta we have aussie open the team of mark davis and kyle fletcher and we have the Kingdom, the team of Mike Bennett and Matt Taven, of course, accompanied by Maria Canellis Bennett. And the Lucha Brothers, of course, accompanied by Alex Abrahantis. Uh So this, whatever else happens on the show, this is likely to be, I think this is going to be the match of the night. Yeah, um, I agree. So the Lucha Brothers have been the champions since March 31st. Supercard of Honor. Supercard of Honor. They have seldom defended the tag team titles. They they have not appeared on Ring of Honor too much. Uh, What do you see happening here, Kay? 
Um, well, I think, first of all, I think, I think the Lucha Brothers haven't been on Ring of Honor as often because, uh, with Triple Mania just happening in Tijuana, Mexico, uh, based on the, uh, like, previous promos that they had shown prior to Penta's match, it seems like Penta has been in Mexico for a while, so I think that's why they haven't been defending them as much. Um, so hopefully, if they retain, hopefully they'll start defending them more frequently. Um, I had a really hard time picking this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, best friends I could eliminate almost immediately. Uh, I don't see them winning the Ring of Honor Tag Champion. What is that? Who you picked? Why are you making that face? No, I just... It, it's a shame because it's so easy to eliminate them. It and is they, very easy to eliminate they're them. They're good in the ring and they're always there. They always put on a solid performance, but it's just always easy to be like, ah, they're not winning anything. Yeah. Well, it's because, like... They put on a solid performance, but they're nothing to write home about. Yeah, solid but non-spectacular. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, Trent, though, on his, in his singles matches, he is spectacular. When he yeah. stands alone, he can put on not... He can't. Not, not since his surgery. He's been yeah. a little more risk-averse Yeah. since his, since his surgery, since his Understandably. neck fusion. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But in the past, Trent definitely, standing alone, could put on some pretty spectacular matches. So, I had a really hard time with this. Uh, I have Ozzy Open winning, and who I want to win is the Kingdom. What? I know. I knew I I was going to get that reaction from you. I think the Kingdom should have won at Supercard of Honor. They are Ring of Honor born and bred you know i mean like they are ring of honor to me and how much being in that reach for the sky ladder match meant to them and how much the briscoes meant to them i feel like they should have won it uh in that in that match and they didn't and so i'm kind of rooting for them because i think i think they need to get it I also think that they are the driving force of this tag division. I I feel like they're the ones with a clear storyline that are pushing the movement in the division forward. They had a great feud with Top Flight when they still existed. Um, uh, and with Action and Dreddy yeah, and, and Martins, Darius. Both yeah, Martin both, brothers are hurt. Yeah, both Martins are injured right now. Um, but they just do great heel work. I feel like they've earned it. I feel like they'll be fabulous champions however i think ozzy open is going to win ozzy open while not i don't think officially part of ring of honor uh, i think they're still with new japan um they've made frequent appearances i think frequent enough to become the new champions i thought ozzy open or aw are they aw now i i thought so i could be wrong okay i I might have just missed that i could be wrong about that no it's okay i sometimes i don't go on twitter and i miss tony khan's all elite tweets so i might have just missed those um but then even more so then that supports my argument for why i think uh I, i just realized i spelled ozzy wrong um but uh yeah i think that they're an up and coming tag team i know Mark Davis is a little bit older, um, but I think that he and Kyle Fletcher work together really well. Mm -hmm. I think that they'll be there to defend it probably more often than the Lucha Brothers have since March. Um, And they're just such good personalities. I could see them, I could see them getting it. But again, I am for the kingdom. Wow. I might have talked myself into switching to the kingdom. I have to think about it. You mean as who is going to win? Yeah. I had to put as much thought into this match as all the other ones combined, honestly. Um, The best friends I eliminated immediately, you know, because they never win anything. Uh, And so the Lucha Brothers are the, the champions. They're the best team in the match, obviously. The most skilled team in the match. They're the most decorated team in the match. Um, Aussie Open, very skilled, uh, as you said, kind of up and coming, you know, could use a push, could use the belts, the kingdom, everything you said, yeah, I agree with, you know, they are Ring of Honor, and they, 
they uh, performed very well in that in that ladder match in which uh, was that Dante Martin broke yes. his leg. Yeah, they performed very well, and they uh, when the, when it's pay per view time, the Kingdom they step up, and they're two excellent guys, Bennett and Taven, two excellent wrestlers, and you can tell that they want. Uh, you know, so to speak, they want the ball, you know. They want to run with the ball. Um, if I can use a football metaphor. Uh, so I had it down to the Lucha Brothers, Aussie Open, and the Kingdom. And I, I had a lot of trouble deciding. Uh, not who I'm cheering for. I'm definitely cheering for the Lucha Brothers. I'm always for the Lucha Brothers. Always, always. I usually am, too. Yeah, that's I can't believe you're not for them, but uh, yeah, that's messed up. But who who do I think will win? The Lucha Brothers, as as we've outlined, have seldom been there to defend the, the belts. I I think maybe we'll start seeing them a little more. I pick the Lucha Brothers to hold on to the belts, and maybe we'll see them a, a little more in Ring of Honor. Uh, but but either way, I don't see them uh, losing the belts uh, after just uh, after not quite four months. I don't I don't see them losing the belts just yet. It just I don't know. It I, it just doesn't feel like they're they're gonna, they're losing the belts just yet. It feels like they were given the belts as a reward. You know, when when things in AEW, they have plans for teams like FTR, maybe for Bullet Club Gold, things like that. They have plans for other teams in AEW. feels like the Lucha Brothers were given the Ring of Honor belts as a reward for all their excellent work when, they, when they're in a position where they can't be given the AEW belts. Mm-hmm. So I don't see them being taken away just yet. So I'm picking... Uh, I'm picking the Lucha Brothers to retain their belts, uh, and as I said, that's also who I'm who I'm cheering for, the Lucha Brothers. Uh, but the one thing, as I said, we can agree on in this match, I think this will be the match of the night. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't think that the Lucha Brothers, now that Pac has returned, are going to reform Death Triangle and be a trios? Because uh, that that was part of my reasoning for not picking them was in the events that they do reform because it looked up until last night like Pac was going to possibly join the Blackpool Combat Club, but now it is very clear that that is not the case. Um, yeah, that's and so, uh, that's a great question. I mean, yeah. the Lucha Brothers and Pac were, I think, the best trios team that AEW has seen. Ooh, Death more Triangle than, more than the Elite. I think so. Death Triangle. I, I agree, th- I I agree so. with you. I'm just surprised that... Um, I mean, it's very close, obviously. Yeah. But, I mean, those are the top top two. I mean, that Best of Seven oh series... Oh, my God, the Best of Seven series. was amazing. It was, it was phenomenal. It was, it was terrific. Um, that's been one of the best things that's happened in AEW, and it's four or five years, however long it's been. It's one of the best things that's happened in wrestling. I agree. Yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> it's awesome. Phenomenal. Um but will they reform Death Triangle? That's a great question. Uh, Lucha Brothers are faces right now. Pac is... I guess, I guess he's a face. Since he turned on Black Bull Combat Club, who are heels, I guess that makes him a face. Yeah, but then... It was, it was just... Last night was confusing. We'll talk about that when we do our uh, Dynamite recap and review. But... I don't know, with what happened after the match with Blackpool Combat Club shaking hands and stuff with the Elite, like, are they still heels? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. We'll talk about that later. In yeah. an AEW show. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for the World Tag Team Championship, it looks like a, a great match. Um, but yeah, definitely was the hardest to pick, I think. Yeah. Because you could make a case, even though we bo- both said we eliminate the best friends first off, you can make a case for any of these four teams, mm-hmm. really. Yeah. All right, up next we have man, the match maybe I'm most looking forward to, honestly. 
Maybe the maybe the mat probably the match I'm second most looking forward to. Yeah, because the tag team title match is gonna be fucking awesome. So this is the match I'm second most looking forward to. The Ring of Honor World Television Championship match. Uh, we have the champion, Samoa Joe. He has had the belt since April 13th of 22. So he's had it for over a year now. Uh, had it for over 15 months now. And he is defending the title against the winner of a, uh, of a tournament that Ring of Honor held. This is a spoiler. If you're listening to this before Ring of Honor tonight. Yeah, Ring of Honor t- is airing tonight. So if you don't want the the tournament spoiled, you should fast forward. I don't know, because we're going to be talking for the next several minutes about this match. Yeah. I don't know, fast forward a little bit. Because we're spoiling who wins this tournament tonight on, on Ring of Honor, Honor Club. Uh, so we're, we're spoiling it now. So go ahead and fast forward if you don't want it spoiled. Uh, Samoa Joe is defending against Dalton Castle. Yeah! Uh, one of both of our favorite wrestlers. Yes. Uh, one of the greatest showmen in American wrestling today. Uh, Mm. Dalton Castle, accompanied by the boys. And Castle, uh, an accomplished wrestler, uh, in his own right, former Ring of Honor World Champion, uh, you know, he's a a comedy wrestler, of course, uh, does quite a bit of comedy, but not solely a comedy wrestler. He is actually a skilled wrestler with a, with an amateur background, uh, so he blends actual wrestling skill and comedy uh, deftly, uh, mm-hmm. much as uh, Orange Cassidy does. Um, and it's also worth noting Dalton Castle has also been the TV champion before, uh, once before, and he's also been uh, the six man tag champions twice, twice prior to this. With the boys. With the boys, yes. Uh, so, yeah. So Dalton Castle won a uh, a tournament that was done kind of last minute. As I said, it's it's airing tonight on Honor Club one day before the pay per view. Um, so, Kay, who do you see winning this match? Or wait, I'll go first on this one. Okay. I'll go first on this one. Um, they, well, as I said, this is the match I'm second most looking forward to. It's gonna be, I mean, Samoa Joe is not comedy, you know, he's deadly serious, you step in the ring with Samoa Joe, he's looking to, you know, put you to sleep. He's looking to, you know, kill you, demolish you, break you. Uh, Dalton Castle is looking to do the same thing, but he wants to have fun while he does it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, this is going to be a very interesting matchup. Uh, I cannot wait to see how Samoa Joe handles the uh, homoerotic playfulness of Dalton Castle and the boys. The, uh, I can't wait to see the, the reaction that Samoa Joe has to it. Uh, and how he, you know, how he, how he counters it. I'll be interested to see how involved the boys get in the match. You know, it, it, it depends. Will the referee have leniency, you know? Uh, I, I think we're going to see the boys get demolished by Samoa Joe. Quite frankly, I think that's going to be a part of the match. We're going to see them get, no. yeah, yeah. We're going to see them get maybe some suplexes or maybe some coquina clutches put on the boys. The uh, boys are uh, Brent and Brandon Tate, uh, in case you're wondering who the boys are, if you're unfamiliar. Yes, they're very thin, very small. Twins. Twins. Uh, implied sexual slaves of Dalton Castle. Let's just be up front. That's what they are. He does a uh, homosexual... That's his gimmick, is that he's a homosexual with manservants. I don't think it's ever put out there. That's his that's... fucking gimmick. Stop. That's what his gimmick is. I think he's just very flamboyant. He's a gay man with manservants. Yes, that's his gimmick. He wears rainbow things and he dances around. He 
wears colorful things. He doesn't wear rainbow things. I've seen him with rainbows on his mm-hmm. outfits, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and peacock feathers and this and all, yes. Yeah. He is a gay man with manservants, with shaved manservants. So, yes, that is his gimmick. Don't Don't play coy with me. I know what's going on with okay. with this gimmick here. Um, but yeah, if you've never seen Dalton Castle, you're in for a treat because it is. It may sound bizarre, and it is, but man, this guy is funny. He he pulls off this, and you you know you hear, you know the gay guy gimmick. You may think you've seen it before, or you've not seen it like he does it. Uh, the way that he has the boys literally eating uh, from from his hand. <laughs> and he's not using the word literally incorrectly there. No, they literally eat from his hand. They eat bird seed from his hand because they are peacocks, you see. Uh, well, they're baby chicks. He's they're baby chicks. He's a peacock. He's a peacock. Thank yes. you for correcting yeah, me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the way he pulls off this gimmick, he is something else. Uh, you know, he wears these body suits these sequined body suits uh, to the ring and, you know. He's got wings. Yeah, and has these uh, spectacular entrances and. uh, He does a slow turn with the camera where he, like, ring around the rosy spins with it while talking directly to the camera slash audience members about a different topic every time. It's more like a twirl, like like in a... uh, in a romance movie, when the, yes, when, thank the you. when the romantic leads are in a field and they grab mm-hmm. hands and they're twirling yes. around and it and That's it's showing accurate, a close though. up, he does that with the cameraman as though he is in love with with the cameraman or in love with the viewer. Uh, but he does a lot of a lot of fun stuff. Uh, like I said, if you've never seen him before, you're in for a treat. And in the ring, he's, like, super powerful. Like, yeah. he, I believe he was a collegiate wrestler, at least trained in that style. And it really comes across in his wrestling. Um, yeah, very strong core, very strong in the thighs. Strong hips. He's hips, got, I think, yeah. I think it was Ian Riccoboni. Someone said that he's got the best hips in the game, and I agree. He's, he, a lot of his moves come from, from his hips. Mm-hmm. Has a very wide base. Mm-hmm. Very strong base, uh, deceptively strong guy. It'll be interesting to see if he can pull off the bangerang on Joe. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. Um, but it it'll be a fun show. Uh, I think Samoa Joe is winning. I don't see them ending Joe's uh, what did I say fifteen month long world television title reign. Uh, kind of on a whim of a of a a match that's made one day before the pay-per-view. I, I just don't see that ending his 15-month world television title reign when he's beaten all comers. Now, if you've not already guessed, I'm cheering for Dalton Castle. Uh, he's one of my favorite acts in pro wrestling right now. I'm definitely cheering for him. We're, we're a Dalton Castle uh, family in this house. but uh, But I'm predicting Samoa Joe. Okay, who are you, uh, what are your thoughts on this one? While you make some very good points, I am not picking against Dalton Castle, so I'm picking Dalton Castle. Instead of it, viewing it as a, after this, like, one-off tournament that seems so random and last minute, I'm going to view it as, after this hard-fought battle through this tournament to reach the end, which is Samoa Joe for this title shot, Dalton Castle is going to rise triumphant uh, at the end of the match with his hand held high by the referee. And then on the other hand, the television championship. So I'm going for Dalton Castle, of course, and I am predicting him winning because I can't root against my heart. Let's see. All right. This may cost me the belt, but it'll be worth it to fully support Dalton Castle. Got a number of... Uh... Of differences. Who did you predict in the Shibata match again? Shibata. And you predicted Nightingale? No, I predicted Athena. Predict that's the, that's Athena. the only one we've agreed on so far. No, the only one we agreed on is Athena. Okay. Which is not, not 
normal. You know, like we yeah. normally we have some differences, but normally the majority of our picks are are united. Mm-hmm. All right, and um, you have anything else you want to say about the world television title match? I don't think that the boys are going to get involved. Oh, they are. They're going to get laid out by Joe. I yeah. guarantee it. I don't even know. Like, I didn't even know if they would be there. Of course they'll be there. For his entrance? They're going to get destroyed by Samoa Joe. They're going to okay. be there to, to be show that Joe's, her. A, yeah, that Joe's a monster. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, and that leaves us with our, uh, what I what I think will be the main event on the card. I'm pretty sure it will be. Uh, the Ring of Honor World Championship match. We have the champion, Claudio Castagnoli of the Blackpool Combat Club, and he is taking on Pac. And so this is another match made with, uh, you know, one day notice. Uh, So what happened last night on AEW Dynamite, we had the Golden Elite versus the Blackpool Combat Club in the main event, the Blood and Guts, you know, two rings with a uh, steel cage around them both, big five-on-five match, lots of blood, lots of weapons, uh, lots of fun, five bones out of five, great match. Go back and watch it if you haven't watched it. Um, So Pac was on, he was the fifth member of the Blackpool Combat Club's team, he was not officially in the Blackpool Combat Club, but he was on their team. And uh, what eventually happened is he flipped off all the members of the Blackpool Combat Club and left. I will say a few times during the match he had little like moments with Claudio where he was like, where they were like sizing each other up, I guess, or, like where they were like chest to chest sort of glaring. You know, doing that thing where you're, like, walking forward, but you can't walk forward because there's someone in front of you and they're walking towards you. So you're, like, pushing against each other with your chests, Mm -hmm. you know? I don't know if that has a name, but there were a few moments of that prior to the flipping off. Yeah, Yeah, and I'm not sure what the final straw was on the flipping off, are you? I know that, like, the the chest-to-chest thing happened right before that. I don't know if there was a shove... That stopped the chest to chest from Claudio, or or what the uh, if there were words exchanged. Or if there were words exchanged, yeah. Well, we're gonna rewatch it, so I guess we'll find out soon. Yeah, but um, yeah, I'm not sure what the final straw was, but Pac had apparently had enough of being being on the team and flipped everyone off and left, mm-hmm. and left it at five on four. Very shortly after that, Kanosuke Takeshita was uh, uh, Don Callis came and got him which left it at 5-on-3. Very shortly after that, believe it or not, Blackpool Combat Club lost the match. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Do you want to talk about why this match was so last minute? Yeah, yeah. So this match uh, is so last minute because we were going to have the main event of Claudio Castagnoli defending his belt against Mark Briscoe. Uh, but Mark Briscoe got injured, uh, which left... Uh, left us without a, a world title challenger. And so, uh, thankfully, I guess thankfully, Pac and Claudio got in that fight, because otherwise, I don't know who would have been the challenger for this mm-hmm. match, you know? Yeah. Uh, I thought it was going to be Eddie Kingston, but he's in Japan, I think. He is in Japan, in yeah. the in the uh, New Japan G1, mm-hmm. which is a big uh, round-robin style tournament that they do. Oh, cool. Which, if we had any time, would be very fun to watch. Um, but we don't have time for that. Um, but yeah, it's a big thing where, you know, it's, there's a schedule. It's, it's like the World Cup, kind of. Oh, okay. You know, it's a schedule. It's like on Monday you face this guy, on Tuesday you face that guy, on Wednesday you face this, that. Like I said, it's a round robin. Mm -hmm. And there are groups, group A, B, C, D, blah, blah, blah. It's a big tournament. That's cool. It's a big time thing. If you win the, if you win the G1, you get a big cup. And it's a it's a big uh, it's, it's a big, big deal, deal. Mm-hmm. yeah big big deal. But yeah, he's in that for the first time, Kingston. That's cool because he is currently the New Japan Strong Open Weight Men's Champion. Mm-hmm. 
And, um, but yeah, but yeah, so we do have a challenger and it's made, like I said, with a day's notice, but we do have a challenger and it's pack. And this is probably going to be a hell of a match. I'm excited. Um, and so Claudio has had the belt since December 10th of last year. This is his second reign as world champion of Ring of Honor. Um, Kay, uh, what do you think about this match? I have Claudio retaining, and I am for Claudio retaining. I don't see them... When, when it was Mark Briscoe, I thought that Claudio was going to lose the belt, and I thought he was going to lose it to Mark Briscoe, because they need to give Mark Briscoe a freaking belt already. Um, I thought he should have won at Super Card of Honor against Joe, and he did not. Um, and so I feel like they owe him. Um, but it's not Mark Briscoe, it's Pac. And because the match was made so last minute, I really doubt they're going to take the belt off Claudio to give it to Pac. Um, I could be wrong. Maybe their whole goal is to get the belt off Claudio to anyone they see fit, but I would be surprised at that. So I have Claudio Castagnoli retaining. Yeah. Uh, Pac is one of my favorites in, in AEW slash ROH. Uh, so I'm definitely going for Pac. Uh, I think, you know, pound for pound, he's one of the most skilled wrestlers in the world. Because um, he can do a brawling style, he can do a high-flying style, he can bust out some technical moves here and there, too. Uh, he's a fairly complete wrestler. Um, his promos are good, they're believable, he seems like a nasty bastard. Um... You know, you think he's going to go in there and beat somebody up. Uh, so I'm cheering for Pac. I would love to see him win the Ring of Honor World Championship. But, as you said, on, on one day notice, you know, do I see them on one day notice booking Pac to win the World Championship from Claudio Castagnoli? No, I do not. Uh, so I'm cheering for Pac, but I'm predicting Claudio to retain the championship uh, in what I expect to be a, a hell of a match. This will probably be... I bet this will be the second best match on the show. Yeah, I bet. I don't know about that. And then probably Samoa Joe and Castle third. I would put the main event fourth. Really? Yeah. You're crazy. You'll see. Have you seen Shibata? Shibata is like smooth like butter. That will be. That'll be good. That will be the. Th- it'll be good. That'll be the third best match, I think. Mm. Uh, or no, excuse me. That'll be the fourth best match. Excuse me. I think Joe and Castle will be the third best. The pure championship will be fourth best. The women's championship will be fifth best. I think Shibata and Garcia might be second best. Wow. And then Joe and Castle. And then Claudio and, and Pac. Hmm. And then Athena and Willow. Hmm. But, so we're both agreeing the women's match will be the least good. Yeah, and again, not because it's not going to be good. Just because all of these matches are going to be great, you know? And so theirs will be the yeah. least great. And the, I don't know about great. The least good. And the and the tag match will be great. Yeah, we, mm-hmm. we agree that'll be the best match. Yeah. So, there you have it. Your Ring of Honor, Death Before Dishonor uh, preview show and predictions. Uh, we agreed on which one? On two, I believe. We, on Claudio retaining... And then on Athena retaining. Yeah, we agreed on on the the men's and the women's world title. And then we disagreed on the Pure Championship, the World Tag Team Championship, and the World Television Championship. So how many belts do you have changing hands with your predictions? With my predictions, I have only the Pure Championship changing hands. And I have only the TV and the tag changing hands. Mm Interesting. Interesting. Well, I'm excited. Last oh, yeah. uh, Their last pay-per-view, Super Card of Honor, was 
by far, hands down, my favorite pay-per-view of this year so far. Um, so they have a lot to live up to. I'm assuming, like we said, we're going to get some more matches. I'm hoping we get some kind of righteous Stu Grayson match in there somewhere. Um, any matches that you're hoping we get that haven't been announced yet? Uh, I'd like to see the righteous in a tag match. I heard a rumor that there's going to be... Uh, who was that? Uh, Wolf said it was going to be, what, Evil Uno versus... Didn't he say that? Oh, Evil Uno versus, versus Stu, Stu Grayson. Grayson. Yeah, I forgot he said that. That's not official. Oh, okay. But he said Evil Uno versus Stu mm-hmm. Grayson. I'd be down with that. Um, I'm not sure exactly what has been transpiring between the Dark Order and and the Righteous. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to see the Righteous... Uh, if he is in the U.S., I would love to see Alejo Del Vikingo get added to the show somewhere. Um, I'd love to see some of the high flyers like A.R. Fox, uh, Metalik, Blake Christian get added to the card. Uh, I'd love to see those guys. I'd love to see the six-man belts get added to the card. Oh, yeah. Brian Cage and... and yeah. uh, and the gates of agony. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see them defend them against against someone. Yeah. Uh, Maybe we could get... Oh, if we could get the Blake Christian, Metal League, AR Fox. They've, uh, had oh. their, they've had their shot. Yeah. But there aren't that many trios teams on Ring of Honor. True. Just, um... Man, I don't know who's going to beat that team. No, Brian Cage no one is going the to gates beat that of team. Agony. That team is going to have to crumble from within in order for them to be beatable. That's the way it seems. Yeah. And I feel like because they joined the mobile embassy, like they've united, that crumbling is a long ways off, I think. That's the way it seems, yeah. So, yeah, the uh, six-man belts are not on the line. I think that's the only belt. That's, that's the only belt not on the line. Yeah. yeah. So it would be nice if, if they would put those on the line. Um. I think we'll probably get a second women's match. They normally, at least on their television shows, do two women's matches. That would be nice. Uh, Maybe see Trisha Dora on there. Oh, maybe. You're talking to my dreams. Um, I think we might get... I I don't know if she still is, but for a long time, Sky Blue was undefeated on Ring of Honor. So we might get a Sky Blue match. Maybe. Um, It feels weird having, like... What is essentially half a card. Yeah. I mean, these matches might get more time, so it might not be literally half a card. But yeah, I know. can't believe... Uh, well, like I said, I mean, seemingly, Tony Khan thinks people are waiting until the day or the day before a pay-per-view to to decide if they're going to, to buy it or not. Yeah, are you checking if there are any more matches? Uh, that's absolutely what I'm doing. I mean, I guess check before we're done recording this, because we're, we're recording this on uh, Thursday, the the day before the show. No, most of the announcements are for matches tonight, because they have yeah. their Ring of Honor episode tonight. Yeah, these are all matches for tonight. Yeah. Trisha Dora is on one of the posters for episode 21, so I guess she has a match tonight. That's cool. Oh. Yeah, she's going to be in action. She joined the infantry. Yeah. Oh, I got to catch up. I'm so glad we already joined Ring of Honor. If you're not a member of Honor Club, let me just talk it up for a second. I realized that we unjoined briefly, uh, but if money was not an issue, that would not be what we did. Um, Ring of Honor is my favorite wrestling show. Uh, Asa disagrees with me, and that's okay. But it is usually two hours of nothing but wrestling. Like, you get, like, maybe a minute to a minute and a half promo two or three times throughout the show. But other than that, it's all wrestling. I used to number the matches when we would take notes on it, and, like, the average is ten matches per show. It is delicious wrestling, and you should totally consider spending only ten dollars a month to join yeah for four or five shows so that's ten dollars a month equaling out to uh 
between eight to ten hours of, of good wrestling. Yeah. yeah. It's like 40 matches. Ten dollars. Forty matches. Forty to fifty. Forty to fifty. Depending. Yeah, depending on the show. Yeah, yeah. depending on the month. Yeah. 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 It's worth it. Yeah, it's sure. definitely worth it, yeah. Well, folks, that is uh that is gonna do it for us. When's the next time they can hear from us, they said? Well, this is going up this is uh it's Thursday afternoon, uh, as I speak. So this is going up Thursday afternoon. Uh, we're getting ready to rewatch Dynamite, and we're going to put up our Dynamite uh, review Thursday afternoon also, and we'll be doing our, uh, we'll be doing, uh, we're going to be on Last Week in Wrestling, the video podcast, uh, you can find them on Twitter or on YouTube, We'll be on that tonight at 7 p.m. discussing some fun subjects. I'm going to say, you should join on YouTube because then you can take part in the, ch- the group chat that's on there. And we often will in- engage with the with what people are saying. So if you want to have your voice heard while we're on the podcast, join on YouTube so you can join in the chat. Yeah, and again, that's Last Week in Wrestling on YouTube. 7 p.m. we'll be on there. Um yeah, so this afternoon we'll have the AW Dynamite report up uh, tonight at 7 p.m. Last week in wrestling on YouTube. Uh, tomorrow night we'll be live tweeting uh, Death Before Dishonor. And Saturday we will have our Death Before Dishonor uh, recap up. And then, of course, Sunday we will have our Collision recap up. So, uh bunch of uh bunch of stuff going on this weekend Mm -hmm. it's another wrestling weekend and if you're new to the podcast welcome uh we normally do a dynamite recap every thursday and a collision recap every sunday so that can be uh that's our regular schedule uh when there's not extra pay-per-views and stuff going on um but yeah so uh wherever you're listening please subscribe make sure you don't miss any podcasts and wherever you listen, please rate us five bones, five stars, whatever they'll let you give us. Give us the most. That's how we get new listeners, and then we can all talk wrestling together and have a good time. And uh, thanks for listening. And um, as Mick Foley would say, have a nice day. Bye.